Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about overview of Clip Studio Paint version 3.0, new features, updates, and improvements, presented by Sarah Jean Chung, also known as the one with Bear. As you know, this webinar uh, will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. We invite you to use the question panel to send questions and doubts. There's a chat, but we only use it for uh, information that we share with you. And also we'll select the most of your questions to try to fit them on our 15 minutes at the end of the webinar. Uh, we'll try to answer all of your questions. Also, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be shared on social media, will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Marie Quinones, myself, and Sarah Jean Chang. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Also, we invite you to share your Instagram stories, tagging us as hashtag webinar at the one with bear, at graphicsly, at Wacom, and at Clip Studio Official. We'll share your stories. Sarah Yin Chang, also known as the one with bear, is an illustrator and comic book artist who specializes in a wide range of mediums in digital and traditional. Clip Studio Paint is the primary software used to create her comic series sanctioned through the Willow Tree. So with that, I will leave you with Sarah Jean and her presentation, overview of Clip Studio Paint version three, new features, updates, and improvements. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mario. And hello, everybody. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, just give me one second. Let me show my screen. Hopefully that is the right one. Mario, can you confirm for me? <laughs> Yep, all set. Oh, awesome. Hello, hello. I am the one with Bear. Um, a lot of the people probably already know me from previous uh, feature update webinars because that's kind of my thing. I like to do the features. Uh, I am extremely passionate about just the tech nooks and crannies. So I tend to enjoy covering these stuff. Um, but the past year has been insanely busy for me, so I just haven't really done any more. So it's been a while uh, since the last public webinar that I've done. Most of the other ones are all private. And if you guys have attended the ones that I hosted before, thank you very much and welcome back. And for those who are new, uh, have never seen my work before. I do digital as well as traditional art. Uh, I did actually did not prepare any of my work samples uh, today to go over what I do, but um, because today I just kind of want to focus on the features. But yeah, that's basically <laughs> that's basically it for me. Um, I am very excited for today. So today, what we're going to do is to cover everything that is included in, well, I shouldn't say everything, but all of the new stuff since Clip Studio 2.0. Um, there are some stuff that are separated or that are exclusive to the 3.0. Um, that's not including the 2.1 and so on. <laughs> I know, I, I like if you think, it's all mumbo jumbo. It's very confusing. I feel you. I agree with you. Um, but we will try to just kind of focus on the features themselves today. All right. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, today, we are going to be using some of the samples and uh, to go over all of these features. And then so we can see the effects live. Uh, this is a painting of mine, an older painting of mine. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really been painting full illustrations and clip studio paint in a while just because the comic has sucked up so much of my lifetime. But let's do this. Uh, so the first portion of this webinar, we're going to do filters. There are a couple of filters, new filters, 
uh, that have been introduced in Clip Studio Paint and also Color Match System. So let's play with that. So you go to Edit, and then you go into Tonal Correction, and on the very bottom, you will see something called the Color Match uh, option. So once you enable this, you will notice that the image has changed color, right? So if you select different ones, it's basically taking the overall colors or hues and then applying them to your image. And so this is a really nice way to kind of check different types of temperatures or different types of possibilities for the colors you've already laid down. Um, and so these are some of like the more default ones, like you can see this one is more colorful, has a lot of hues, so it almost kind of like boosts the saturation of my painting. But at the same time, because it has a lot of blues, it also adds like a blue tint uh, to my image. But I can also use my own images. So these are some of the portraits that I have painted. Um, using different color palettes. So let's try this one because it has like some yellow, some greens. Uh, let's try that one. Mm, it's not so similar, but I, I guess like it has uh, that kind of beige color on the side. So I'm going to check off maintain brightness, which kind of gives it an interesting effect, right? So I kind of can use uh, these these options to just try out different things. You know, it's digital art, right? Like this is the ease of digital art sometimes and also the danger of digital art. It's you can spend forever um, jumping back and forth on all of these possibilities. And then sometimes it's really fun and then the other times it just takes up additional two hours. So, okay, I can like try to hop around. I can also, so I kind of like this one, it's sort of interesting. And then I can lower the intensity a bit um, to kind of give that bits of retro feel or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then there is, of course, the gradients, which are also very interesting, but I have to admit, I'm not like super technical about this aspect because it's colors. I just go with the feel right? Like I click on it and I, uh, does it feel good? And no, it doesn't feel good. Then I change to another one. I don't really put more thought to it than that, right? So, all right. So this is the color match system and I do find it to be very fun. Um, and you can just give that a try if you already have 3.0 or if you're thinking to eventually purchase 3.0, I believe you can try it out um, in a trial system. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that real quick. And then I am going to show you the filters. Under filter, under effect, there are a couple of new ones that have been added, which is chromatic of chromatic of <laughs> chromatic aberration. Uh, there is pencil drying, and then there's retro film. We'll talk about the normal ones later on. Uh, but normal maps is not generally the ones that you want to use for, you know, just artistic interpretation. But we're going to try this one. Oh, there is also, uh, there you go. Okay. So, you know, fairly, fairly straightforward stuff. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how really to, you know, make this more advanced sounding thing it really is because it, it's a filter right like it's just it looks cool you put it on your painting and it looks cool and that's about it right and uh but you can set like the different uh types of options and again i won't really get overly technical about explaining how the, any of this works just give it a try and see what feels good so that's chromatic abracadabra whatever and then effect, uh, let's go to pencil drawing. You see, I like this one. This one I understand. It just turns it into something that looks like a pencil drawing. You know, what's not to understand about that. And I can change the hatching size, etc. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and I can also just show the outline. 
So I'm going to do like a quick little effect afterward because uh, obviously this is making it a transparency thing. And then it's basically just kind of detecting the edge or the more obvious places and then give it a line. Uh, but we're going to apply that a little bit later. So this is what the pencil drawing one does. Again, super self-explanatory, right? And then the next one is uh, retrofilm. I like this one a lot, <laughs> right? We can do, so you see, I, I like how it's just adding this warmth to the bottom right half of the, the thing. Um, and we can add more noise, uh, less noise. <laughs> what does it look like when it's, that's funny. And then of course there are just different types of settings uh, yet again, and then you can do your own, um, sorry, there's different presets like vintage, modern, warm, super self-explanatory. I like this one. So we're going to, so those are the, you know, major filters that have been introduced. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. Uh, you can right click and just hit duplicate. So we're going to duplicate that. And I am going to use the pencil drawing one and then disable the hatching. Let's see. So this gives quite an kind of an interesting look. Like it almost um it almost gives it a a more sharper edge, if you can see that, right? So sometimes this can add just a tad more texture to your overall painting. But since my painting is already pretty hectic, I normally wouldn't do stuff like this. And this is really just for demo purposes and also just try out the different things uh, that you would want to, that's potentially can enhance your painting. But I am going to actually do that again. And this time I would do both of them. So, okay, let's add a bit of hatching to it. And I'll set this top one to brightness. So immediately it gives like the painting that sort of anime ending last frame look. If you watch anime, you probably know what I'm talking about, but there's always like that freeze frame at the very end of an anime ending song. And then they would like, you know, just have this wash of hatching going on. And I don't know. Anyway. Um, and then we can do another one. So we'll duplicate that again. And oh, let's see. I kind of I kind of like this. I don't really want the noise because it's just too busy. We do make it a little bit more intense. Yeah, you know, just stuff like this. Uh, it's always really nice to be able to have access to all of these filters and just play around with some possibilities. Like for example, right now I feel, I do feel like this particular layer is making this uh, part a little bit too blurry. So I can always go back with mask and then fix that. Okay, but I do want to, and this leads to our next part of uh, the webinar. It's this is my original painting. And when I want to see what the effect is, I want to enable the top two. And in the previous version, I always had to, you know, disable these two layers and then check out. It, it, it's, it's fine when there are only three layers, but it gets really complicated. And that's where layer comp comes in. So layer comp is, only exclusive in EX version because it's a fairly specific uh, type of feature. And if you have access to Clip Studio EX, 
definitely give this feature a try because, oh my God, it saves so much time. And I'll show you an example later. But basically what you do is, okay, right now I have the very original image uh, shown and it's the only thing visible. All I have to do is click on this and it says at layer comp. So let's um, name it original. All right, so, and then I enable the next two and I hit another one at layer comp. Edited. And now when I click on this icon over here, the eye icon, it's gonna automatically disable those two because I only saved the first layer comp with the very bottom layer invis uh, visible. So I can toggle very quickly between the two and then just compare them. This is so good. <laughs> I absolutely love this feature. And the reason for that is because I do comics and the people who do comics can probably also relate to this because you kind of sometimes want to jump between like the different stages of your page or, you know, just check different possibilities uh, with composition and whatnot. So I always have like a draft comp, which is really just a draft layer. Sometimes I'll refer back to it to see, oh, if right now my, my panels do align with my um, vision. And then I have one that is the 3D model comp, which is, you know, I always I use the 3D models like a massive amount, right? So I can kind of quickly lay out the 3D models and uh, just jump around and looking at that. And sometimes with demos, it's really helpful for me. And I have another comp that is just with a tone. I have a comp for the Chinese version of the page. I have another comp for the English version of the page. So this is a very, very good update for me. Again, this is only available in EX. Uh, so if you have EX, you do have access to this particular feature. All right. So that's color comp, uh, that's layer comp. I don't know why I always call it color comp. And okay, let's move on to the next one. Right, so in uh, this stage, I showed you a little bit of uh, the comic three using 3D model. So right now we are going to show you some of the stuff that has been introduced in the 3D model area. So because I use 3D models a ton, a ton to kind of just look at my compositions, to look at my lightings, to look at the height of the characters. And this is also another thing that I have talked countless times before. So I actually have like a massive amount of um, poses that I have saved from the Clip Studio Asset Store. You know, throughout the years, I've collected just a massive amount of poses. and so poses are really important to me because I always use it as a base um, instead of like posing all of these uh, characters from scratch. I would use a pre-existing uh, pose and then I would, um, hold on, let's, how about we just start one and then we'll use that as an example. Okay, so I always have the different body types for my characters. Uh, already lay out in their proper height. And I would have different poses. Let's go into that's entire body and even pose. So I'll have something like this, right? And this is uh, downloaded or sometimes purchased from the Clip Studio Asset Store. But these can be very overwhelming to keep track of sometimes. And what Clip Studio did this time around was they collaborated with Pose Maniac. And it is awesome because Pose Maniacs is, you know, one of the biggest sites that have these pose references. Uh, so what you do is you go into Subtool Detail on the very bottom, uh, right, that little uh, wrench icon. And then you go into pose over here, and then you click on this little icon here that says open the Pose Maniacs website. You can apply blah, 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 blah. Okay. 
And then you can see all of these. Oh, what what's this pose? What is is this a finger gun pose? I don't even know. Let's check it out. Oh my god, that's <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, I, I mean like that's pretty awesome, I guess. So that's a really great pose. And <laughs> There is just this icon, this magical little icon over here, you know, that has the Clip Studio logo and it says open. So that's open that and you just open. It does it, like it, you do need a Clip Studio version three. And then open. <laughs> this is so amazing. Sorry, I could not have planned this. Uh, but I, I just love this very much. And then, of course, if you don't want to always go into Pose Maniacs, because as far as I know, the uh, the the first page is always random. Um, so if you really do like uh, this particular post, you can then go in and then save save. Uh, what where is the icon? Oh, there it is. Uh, you can register a full body post as a material, right? And you can just go through the regular standard material saving uh, pose. So let's just use this as test or whatever. And then you can save a material image and let's see. see. Search tag. And then OK. And now it should appear in here somewhere. Where did I say? Where did I save it to? Oh, it's over here. OK. Um, so let's go Control Z, Control Z again. OK, let's go back there. And let me close this. Now I have this pose always just in my library ready to go. So yeah. Tons of possibility. This is seriously such an awesome update because it just gives like the entire library of poses. If you feel like you're not finding the right poses in the Clip Studio Asset Store, go to Pose Maniac. They have plenty of stuff over there. All right. So that part, let me just check my notes real quick. Hopefully I am not missing anything in this regard. Okay. I, we are good over there. And speaking of 3D models, there is another very interesting update that has been included. Now, I don't really claim to be an expert in this particular area, but this is uh, shape shape keys in uh, in 3D. In order to have shape key, this is Blender, by the way, and I found um, I found a model for free on a website, which is Sketchfab, that includes a shape key in their model. So for those who are familiar with 3D, or if you have any friends that do 3D, you may be more familiar with this concept. So basically shape keys are over here in Blender, depending on what they decide to show. And they are just different uh, keys that you can manipulate. It's basically animation keyframes. Think of it as animation keyframes, right? And so this model is free. Now that a 3D model, if they have these shape keys incorporated, and when you go into export, export, for example, an FBX file. All right. So the FBX file is downloaded. And we're going to use this particular one to show you. Okay, so we have the FBX file. We drag and drop over here. So now you go into, oh, where is it? Uh, if you go into object, <laughs> when you go into object, you will see shape keys. And this would basically bring whatever setting that you have in the 3D program into the thing. So, okay, like you can now control stuff like this exactly the same way as you would in Blender, All right? So this uh, this model was made by Lori Annis on sketchfab.com.
So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you have a model and then there is no shape key, that just simply means that the 3D model doesn't have it incorporated. Okay, let me take a look. Right. Okay, so this particular part where I credited the, the artist for this free 3D model, um, is a new feature again in the 3.0 where you can now do circular text and it's really just a setting inside the text uh, subtool. Circular text is very, again, very straightforward stuff. Um, you just do here. You just have a circle and then you type whatever. You type whatever and it's going to go around that circle. And if you resize the circle, it's going to, you know, change the curve or or stuff like that. And then you can use the object tool to manipulate where the text is going to go. And there are also a lot of different settings, such as you can change it counterclockwise. Uh, you can put it inside of that circle or outside of that circle. Uh, you can have it spaced evenly, so, you know, you type whatever, and I can make it smaller. Yeah, just stuff like this. Play around with the settings a little bit, and that's basically it. Very straightforward. <laughs> so, speaking of texts and fonts, we have a few new updates uh, in the Clip Studio font settings, which I find, again, it's going to be very useful. Here is a wall of text. I initially was thinking, oh, maybe I will, you know, put up a wall of text as a, as a demo for you. So I Googled uh, the world's funniest joke. But then I was kind of worried that, you know, it's too funny and it's going to distract you from my teaching and I don't want it to, you know, be funnier than me. So I decided, that instead of posting the world's funniest joke, I would post the definition of the world's funniest joke. So this is actually a new, um, a new font uh, by Clip Studio. And right now, <laughs> there is something that is incredibly useful, uh, and that is being able to search for fonts. So if I want to find Clip Studio, I can very quickly use the very top uh, search bar in order to find the font that I want as long as I just type in the keyword. And as you can see, I have like just a, a little bit of fonts, you know, <laughs> like it's just, just, just a little bit. Um, I, I do utilize this a lot just because I can't keep track of my fonts. Uh, I use different folders for them. Uh, but yeah, this is used to be a mess. Uh, and now it's really great. So Clip Studio released uh, a new comic font for you comic book artists or webtoon artists uh, to use. And a, a very interesting thing about this font is that, for example, the I, you know, common thing for comic book fonts, the I would change shape uh, when it's used as a, as a pronoun or is it a pronoun? When it's referring to me, right? And then when it's used as a part of a word, then it changes to San Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember the technical term. It's whatever. And then the other part of it is that it has different looks when the characters are being repeated or they just have different patterns. So you can see this fairly obviously um, when you compare the two O's. Right, like the two O's have a slightly different look, or you can see the N also have a slightly different look. Like this one, you know, curves a little bit downward, this one curves a little bit upward. So this would give it a, a slightly more natural look. I honestly think this is a very, very good looking font. Like I enjoy this a lot. Uh, and they do this for, I believe every character, like the M also is very obviously different. Um, so yeah, you can just uh, give this font a try. It's very clean and uh, straightforward stuff. 
I don't know why you guys need me, to be honest. All right, so that part is over. And let's go into animation, right? Okay, so I'm going to start uh, the animation timeline. This is a super, super quick animation. Uh, I have to say, this particular feature is something that I have requested for uh, what, like, like four years, maybe, maybe three, three, four years. Um, for those who remember my days of doing the Clip Studio tutorials on major features in Clip Studio Paint or the Wacom channel, I even talked about this because Clip Studio used to be extremely complicated when it comes to duplicate uh, duplicating a keyframe. So, okay, so for example, I want, this is currently frame 10, right? I want this exact image onto frame 11. Currently, what I have to do is I simply just copy, you know, Control C to copy this image and then go to frame 11, add a new animation cell and control V. That's it. It is so great. This is this is the new update for this particular thing. It's just copy and pasting frames into the next keyframe. It used to be like, if you remember this video series, uh, this was one of the things that I talked about very specifically. Um, and I even included a meme because it was truly complicated. Like I actually had to teach how to use auto action in order to speed up this particular process. So I'm very excited uh, that this is now a thing. You just copy and paste, you know, very good stuff. Okay. And then they also include the audio scrubbing, which I am going to, simply enable this file. So I have an audio file over here and I will just do a drag and drop. Uh, so the the audio file, I basically just drop it onto the frame and then I can now move uh, this audio bar over here. I don't know if you can hear anything uh, on the screen share. I'm not entirely sure, but the concept is simply just you can now hear the audio when you're scrubbing uh, alongside. And this is a wind sound, okay? It's it's like wind, uh, in case you're curious what I just put in here. So you can like hear the wind swooshing through when you're moving forward and then backward when you're moving backward. And sometimes it can get a little bit annoying. So you can go into the sandwich menu over here and then just check off audio scrubbing, right? So then now it's silent again. So it's simply in the um, in the sandwich menu where you can in, uh, enable audio scrubbing. So that's for the people who do animate in Clip Studio. This just makes things a lot easier. I wish I had this thing when I was making that animatic, that five minute animatic uh, thing, because it would have made my life a lot easier. Okay. And then now you can also export. So let's do this. So let's disable the paper layer and that's going to file and export animation and animate a GIF. Okay. I'm going to Export. So I can say make background transparent. Uh, now this is a thing, which is awesome because it also used to be kind of annoying and complicated and slightly ugly. So we'll do just that and then we just hit OK. And then it's completed. Let's see. Let's take a look. Oh, OK. So it now has no background and I hope. You can still see it. <laughs> I did not think this part through. Anyway, so there's that. <clears throat> and speaking of exporting, we also now have export uh, export presets, and you can include watermark on 
your preset. So there are a few things. Let me actually use this one as an example. For you. If I want to export, I just go into export single page and uh, for example, a JPEG, right? And I want to just save it over here. And I have a couple of different export settings already. So now you can uh, save a new preset if you need to. Because sometimes when I am exporting an illustration, I need it to be 100%, right? I need it to be 100%, no crop or anything like that. Um, and then, so that's one of the presets. But for the comic pages uh, for sharing to my community, I do normally need to have a different uh, preset because I need it to crop to crop marks instead of all pages. And I specify my output setting, which is 2000 in height. So they're all consistent. And I basically just have this as a new preset. So if I want to change anything, if I want to add a watermark, now I can add watermark. This is really awesome. I really like this feature because I can now have like a obnoxious logo uh, in all of my exports. And I can save that as a preset as well. And you can find your own uh, images if you so wish. Actually, you know what? Are we able to like use like a piece of art? Oh, we can actually use a full piece of art <laughs> as a watermark. I don't know why you would ever do that. But um, yeah, now you can do that, I guess. Uh, so it doesn't have to be PNG or anything like that. But this is pretty cool uh, that you can just have it automated and included in all of your painting export. And you can also tile it. Um, you know, just be, <laughs> that's going to be, this is going to be my social media life now. It's just all going to be my logo, okay? And I just hit okay, right? And now it's changed to custom because I changed something and I can just say, save presets. And you can include everything that needs to be included in this preset. Like for example, if I don't want the watermark uh, to be in, included in every single painting and I want to do this manually, I can check this one off uh, just so like it doesn't show up every single time. But of course we want my logo all over everything all the time. So we'll just say that, right? So now you can see every single time that I switch to, uh, for example, a comment page, uh, you're going to automatically have that thing disabled. And then when I go into preset, it's going to enable that again. It's going to remember uh, that it's going to look like this. Okay. So those are the export settings that are new. Uh, so again, th these updates are a lot of it is really quality of life. Um, I enjoy them quite a bit because some of these are very helpful for me. And then we're going to move on to normal mats. Because I use so many 3D assets for um, my comics and also just, you know, setting up backgrounds and whatnot, uh, some of the features that are focused on 3D updates are absolutely just phenomenal for me. So for those who are familiar with using 3D or, uh, you know, have used 3D in Clip Studio Paint, normal mats uh, is not really a thing in Clip Studio before. So you, you see this amazing dragon. This I purchased this 3D asset from UNF Games on CG Trader, and he does really phenomenal stuff. Uh, in this dragon, when I first uh, imported them from, uh, I, I first imported this model, it looked kind of flat. It just didn't, it didn't have this shine, you know, like it didn't have, uh, the shine and then the scales were all sort of just flat. And the reason for that is because uh, Clip Studio wasn't capable of reading normal maps. And this is a normal map uh, for that dragon on the, the, the scale. So normal map in my very basic understanding of 3D terms is basically just giving it a faux depth, right? being able to reflect the lights uh, in, on different angles. And that's why if you're a 3D artist in the channel and then I am completely off the mark with my 
quick summary of what normal maps are. You have to forgive me. I'm really sorry for offending your profession. Uh, but basically, that's my understanding of it. It's a, it's a, it's a map to show depth or to reflect light um, in, on different levels. So that's why this dragon now looks absolutely awesome. So yeah, this is a very exciting thing um, for people who use 3D models in Clip Studio Paint. And another really great thing is you can now also export or do a filter for neural maps uh, on a single image. This is a wall that I took a picture of in Taiwan and you can go into filter, effect and normal map. So this would automatically give you that map information um, and then you can adjust the, the strength of it. So you can use this as a texture in your 3D assets when you're making 3D. Okay, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. So all of these are now a possibility and the, okay, moving on, how much more time do we have? If today we run out of time and then we cannot do a QA, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram. I'm happy to answer them for you uh, over there as well. So just in case <laughs> we don't get to those. Okay, so the next part is again, another huge thing for me personally, because I, I needed this uh, feature. It's actually one of the features that I requested for a very long time. Uh, including the the animation one. So you see in the past version, when I need to move this hand, this is a character for me, and then this is a bell that um that I modeled in Blender and I'm going to use for my comment. But you can see when I'm moving the hand, the bell is over here. So I have to like painstakingly adjust the position of this bell. In the past, right? In the, you know, it <laughs> I would spend forever to get if I had just been a solid artist with solid training, I didn't have to do any of this, but you know, I'm not. So there's that. Um, but now you have hierarchy. What you do is you go into object list, and this is the bell uh that is in her hand. I'm going to select this object and I'm just dr going to drag it over this body type and then release. So now you can see this bell is nested inside the body model, right? And what I'm going to do is while I have this bell selected, I'm going to go down here, attachment point, object origin point. I'm going to show which which hand is this? This is the right hand. This is the right hand. We're going to select right hand. Okay. And I'm just going to like position this bell again. Right. Just going to position it real quick. Uh, you know, let's just pretend that I have already positioned it. Okay. And now when I drag this arm, it's going to go with it. Isn't this awesome? Like, I'm so excited for stuff like that. <laughs> so if I had to just properly position this bell, uh, which I did uh, in my in my actual file or whatever, this is a demo file. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh, whatever. It's going to be there. And, and then I go back to this model and I move her hand. It's going to stay exactly where it is. So... This is super, super, super useful for those who have um, a lot of assets, uh, like for example, shoes, armors, or wand, or whatever, and then you you need to use all of these things in multiple panels, right? Because being able to nest this and have these connected is just super incredibly useful. Another really useful thing is it basically groups everything together. And I can show you uh, this page over here. So this panel, is a 3D asset that a 3D set that I built. Uh, it originally looks like this, right? And then when I was building it and I was rotating the thing, there are so many things uh, on this table that was just very overwhelming for me. Like I modeled this uh, table shape, and then there's like a scroll on top of it. There's like a cup. There is a ink thing, and then whatever. Uh, there's a lot going on. So 
when I go into the object list, I put all of those things into the desk, uh, put it under the desk um, list, right? And then now I can move this entire thing together, right? And I can still move them individually if I so wish, right? If I move it over here and I select the table and it's still going to move it all together. So again, this is really quality of life improvement for those who work a ton with the 3D assets, which if you don't, I highly still encourage you to give it a try because it's just a really, really awesome reference making thing that we have, we can have. Okay, so next part. Okay, so there are a couple of other things that are, uh, you know, quality of life improvement. And this is including something like uh, when you go into information. So you go into window information over here. It can show you how much time that you have put uh, into this page. I think this is an EX version only feature. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I kind of forgot. Um, but if you want to look up the features, uh, just information, work time, uh, if it's available in EX only. So this is really helpful because it tells me that, you know, I obviously spend way too much time on this page. <laughs> 20 hours. Ah, okay. Um, so that's one of the other things. And then another really awesome thing that I love, oh, God, this was so useful for me. So this is a, an improvement in the sub view panel. Now you can click on this image list and then you can jump through your reference really, really quickly. So because when I'm doing comics, I need to constantly reference uh, how I drew this character because I don't remember how I drew those characters. So I have to go back to like the earlier page and then just make sure, oh, okay, I have to make sure that he stays on, uh, stays on model or whatever. And so I constantly jump between these things and I used to have to basically like scroll through everything. And until I find the right one, because I just have so many images going on. And now I can just very quickly select um, the ones that I need. So again, this is this kind of stuff always just seems so small. But then when you actually use it, it's freaking awesome. <laughs> like I just can't imagine not having it anymore, honestly. So, okay, sub view organization. And then the next part um, is. You know, these patterns, let's take a look. All right, so in order to do these patterns, uh, you know, there are two ways to warp uh, these patterns on clothing. And sometimes when people like throw a pattern onto a cloth and you want it to uh, look a little bit more natural, there is the liquify tool, which is fairly straightforward. And then there is also the good old warp tool, uh, tool warp tool. Okay, and I can show you what that means. Okay, so I made uh, these, these flower, oops, I made these flower shapes. If you want to learn more about how these brushes are made, they are on my Instagram reel, so you can check it out there. Um, but we're going to go into edit. We're going to go into transform and then mesh transformation. I always recommend assigning a shortcut to this particular feature just because it's super useful. Okay. So now with all of these dots, these dots are nothing new, right? Like they've been there for a very long time. You can adjust how many dots uh, you have on grid or whatever. So those are over here. And the interesting thing is now you can. Oh, good. Oh. You can select the grip point. You can change this part, the drag mode, to select uh, grip points. Or you can hit shift and then select. Right, so you can select multiple 
you can deselect and then you can just move uh, these together. So this is really useful as well, uh, simply because it just gives you a, a more intricate control over uh, these points, right? If you can do both of them at the same time. There you go. So yeah, another useful tool uh, for you to have a better control over your transformation. That's the warp tool. And lastly, oh, we're almost done. Okay, we have 10 more minutes left. I don't know if I can do this, but, <laughs> but let's do this. Um, so I don't know for those who have been with me for a really long time, I know how much you have missed Joseph, our dear good friend, the muscular baby. So he's back uh, today as a you know cameo uh, to showcase the next bit of the feature. And that is going to be the intricate adjustment to torso. So for those who don't know, uh, in one of the videos that I have taught how to use 3D model, which is actually surprisingly still relevant. If you have never used 3D models before, you want to start now, um, feel free to check out this video because it just kind of teaches you the concept of how to navigate these uh, these joints. So we have a new and improved uh, Joseph over here. And now you can go into pose, right? And then you can mirror the pose. Okay, but for example, this arm and this arm, right? We can now mirror it. Oh, you know what? Let's do that again. We can now mirror this. So it, it looks pretty weird, but as you can see, it actually does mirror it pretty well. So like if you, if you are you know, working with a complex pose and you, you want it to be symmetrical, you can definitely um, use this to very quickly get what you want. And even though this looks very weird, but from the back, you can see it, it, it definitely is symmetrical now, right? So there's that, and let's take a look. Let's just give him like a standing pose. Can we actually reset the pose? I think we can reset the pose. It's somewhere around here. Okay, reset, okay, now, okay, now we have a normal Joseph going on. So nowadays you can also go into the body type. Uh, go into like the drawing figure and then you, you can go into individual torso you can choose like upper torso you can like do oh we can give it like a bigger butt <laughs> I don't know it's just yeah I I also did not think this one through I'm sorry uh, but yeah we we, we have stuff that we can work with i i guess um yeah you can uh, you can play around with all of these but basically the concept is really just you have more intricate control over some of these oh, oh like we can have a muscular arm i don't know if i like <laughs> i don't know i don't know if i like any of this i'm really sorry but anyway so you now can um do this to your 3d model so let's move on to the very last part of this webinar, which is tablets. Uh, if you guys have used the mobile version on uh, of Clip Studio, I actually do use the mobile version of Clip Studio when I am traveling, doing work, and I wanted to show you uh, this because I think a lot of people do find the interface of Clip Studio Paint quite overwhelming. Uh, but because this platform, unfortunately, does not really allow me to do video, so I can't uh, give you like a live camera view. So I took some pictures uh, in preparation to show you this particular view. So I would do like all of my comic thumbnails on my tab uh, tablet. And like if you find all of these interface a little bit too distracting and just too much, 
You can now go into the sandwich menu, switch to simple mode, and it gives you like the simple mode. You have the toolbar over here, you have the layer over here, you have the uh, brush adjustment and also opacity down over here. You can uh, have all of your brushes in here in a very you know clean manner. And, and for example, if you want to do selection, you also have the different settings for selections down over here. Um, again, fill tool, you can do close gap very easily, and these will allow you to have access to uh, more adjustments. And of course, the liquify tool, because everybody loves liquify. And the fill tool, you can like choose different shapes, you can choose different fills. And of course, the colors, um, you know, very, very simplistic. I think they did a good job with this. And you can also choose different color sets uh, that are default in Clip Studio Paint. And of course, the layer, which I don't name. Um, you know, the, that, that's what the layer menu looks like. So if you have a Clip Studio on your mobile tablet, for me, this is a Samsung tablet, uh, you can go ahead and give this a try. And, um, you know, you can just change the, the layer function over there as well. This I also find to be really good. It's a very clean organization for the, the materials that I have access to. So these are basically uh, materials, um, on the upper right, that little image icon, and then all of the additional settings are down in the three dots. So for example, you can uh, switch off dark mode, you can flip the interface layout, you can have this toolbar on the left instead of the right, and you can have different touch gesture, you can have like brush cursor change, so yeah, all kinds of features, but just sort of all hidden away so you can just work with a clean interface. Now, I personally, I am used to, I'm used to the chaos, right? Like I, I am used to this. So um, like, I, I, like I have all of my <laughs> usual tools over here, so I can very easily just uh, switch back um, by going back to the sandwich menu and I can switch back to the studio mode at ease. So yeah, it just gives different options for different needs. And I think that's it. That is, did I actually squeeze that into like an hour? I don't even know. Did I? Well, I did. Thank I, you. Two more thank minutes. Thank you so much, <laughs> Sarah Jean. Uh, I know there was a lot of content to, to show today, but you did a, a magnificent job. Thank you. <laughs> and thank all of you who joined us live today. Sorry, Jean, if there's anything that you want to add uh, before we go into the short Q&A? No, um, no, I'm done. Uh, but if we don't get to your questions, please uh, just ask them on my Instagram. I will spend the day to respond to any of the questions you may have. Mm -hmm. And thank all of you who joined us live. We ask at the beginning from where were you watching us? So for example, Alexander from Poland, Lumina from Germany, Hugh from Colorado, Netherlands, Vilna, Nadia, Argentina, Andrea, Spain, Betsy Mar, Venezuela. I know uh, some familiar faces like Sarah was here in Belgium, David. So thank all of you who joined us. Uh, yeah, thank all of you. Uh, and um, let's uh, one question that was repeated. If you can show again how it, um, about the layer comp, how do you yes. select them? How do you play with them? Yes, of course. Um, so let's go into the layer comp. Layer comp is under window and also layer comps. Okay, so right here we have uh, like a ton of different layers. Let's use a simpler one. Uh, okay, so let's delete these ones so I can do it again. I'm sorry if I was too quick on this. Okay, so I want one composition where it's just this image, right? So I would enable this layer you know, have everything showing that you need. And then you simply click on this icon on the bottom right of the layer comp menu, at layer comp. And then it's just original. 
Okay. And then once you are done with this, you can go ahead and enable all of the other adjust them, uh, adjustment layers. And then you save another one by clicking on the add layer comp again and say edit it. Right, so when you are toggling, and then you just click on these eye icon. And when you do this, it basically just toggles. You will see like these are automatically showing and hiding depending on which comp you are editing. Now there is something kind of interesting. For example, uh, I'm using this particular comp right now, right? And I want to also update. For example, I don't want this one to show anymore. Um, when I'm on the 3D models and I go into art tone, so everything is showing over here, and you will see the eye icon that is suggesting that the art tone layer comp is active. And I go in and I decide, okay, I don't want these ones to show, right? I only want these ones. And you would notice that the eye icon move up to the last document state, and then this one disappear. And that is because you changed whatever that was in this comp, right, initially. So it is no longer active. When I click on this eye icon again, it's going to show those because that's what you saved at us. So if I want this, uh, if I if I want this to be the new art tone layer comp, I would have it selected uh, by clicking on these names instead. You will see that when I'm clicking on the name, it doesn't actually make it visible, right? It, you're just selecting that particular comp, and then I simply hit this one, save layer comp. And now when I go back to this one, it's going to show or reflect the very new one that I just saved. Does that make sense? I hope, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, play around with it. And if you really cannot figure it out, please ask me again on Instagram and I'll explain it uh, to you a little bit more thoroughly. But again, this feature is only in Clip Studio EX. So if you have Pro, you won't find it. Mm -hmm. And another question, well, the most favorite question is if this webinar has been recorded. Yes, this webinar has been recorded and will upload to our Graphicsly YouTube channel. So please subscribe to receive a notification once the video is available to watch. So um, another question was from Chantal. Uh, if you can show again, how do you get the simple mode on a tablet? Mm -hmm. Yes. So simple mode is very simple. <laughs> you have uh, this interface, right? You simply go to the sandwich menu on your upper left or just this hamburger menu. And then you simply click on it and then switch to simple mode. That's all you have to do. And then it will just automatically change to this. If you don't have this option, uh, just make sure your mobile version of Clip Studio Paint is updated. So this simple mode is available for mobile devices, and that's why I'm not showing it on the desktop device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, our time is limited. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you have a few more questions, guys, uh, but please check Clip Studio Paint site. Uh, to see more in detail all of these uh, new features. Mm -hmm. We're gonna close with some nice uh, words from you. For example, David said, thanks a lot, Sarajin and Graphicsly. This is very interesting as usual. We don't take the time to find out all of these new features by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Another nice uh, comment from Mikhail. Not a question, just wanted to say thank you, Sarajin, for explaining all the things in this update so clearly and thoughtfully. There are mm -hmm. some things I'm definitely going to try to incorporate into my workflow that'll make mm -hmm. my life much easier. <laughs> so thank you, Mikhail. <laughs> and Caroline says, thank you so much. This has been a very helpful for me and will influence my decision to upgrade. The one mm -hmm. with Veras is just a brilliant and funny, watching <laughs> from sunny California. Thank all thank of you, you. <laughs> <laughs> from the nice uh, words. Uh, also from Delfina, now she wrote, uh, Thank you so much, clear and useful Excel webinar. Greetings from Croatia. So, with those nice words, um, 
And before we go, let me just share my screen mm -hmm. and thank all of you who join us live and make presenter here. So, um, let's see, show my screen. There you go. Um, the webinar has been recorded. Subscribe to our YouTube channels to get a notification more about Clip Studio Paint. Visit our website, clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And for more information about Sarah Jean and her projects, follow her as the one we bear on Instagram, our station, Twitch, and we call it Twitter yet, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you, Sarah Jean. You're awesome mm -hmm. as well. Thank all of you who joined us live. So stay tuned for our next webinar and we hope to see you in our next event. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye-bye.